Male infertility microsurgery is one of the most challenging techniques to master, with the majority of the procedures being done under 10 to 25 times optical magnification. Success in male infertility microsurgery is heavily dependent on the quality and extent of training in the lab. Skills such as the surgeon's hand-eye coordination, dexterity, and steadiness can be safely developed and refined in a laboratory setting. The innovative Cornell Microsurgical Training Program is a two-week course carried out under an IRB-approved protocol. The first week focuses on basic training, while the second week incorporates live procedures on a rodent model. Intensive supervision and continuous evaluation are key features of our training course. The basic equipment required for male infertility microsurgery are listed. The evaluation form we use in our course is shown. In short, 18 different aspects are evaluated on a 5-point Likert scale throughout the two-week course. This table shows common mistakes we observed amongst our trainees and their subsequent improvement following completion of the microsurgical training course. The remainder of this video will further discuss common errors that were observed in positioning, instrument handling, suture placement, and knot technique. A comfortable and ergonomic working position is crucial in order to minimize back pain and tension during microsurgery. The operating microscope, table, and seat should be properly aligned such that the surgeon's head sits straight on the neck with eyes looking straight ahead. A proper sitting position will allow for a discrete curvature of the spine, while adequate elbow and forearm support are crucial to decrease tremors. A commonly seen error involves the use of an incorrect focal distance, which results in unnecessary physical strain. A long focal distance will force the surgeon to stretch his or her neck, causing neck pain. On the other hand, a short focal distance will force the surgeon to curve his or her spine, resulting in back pain. We recommend using the pencil holding position when handling microsurgical instruments. In this position, the instrument rests on the lateral face of the middle finger and is controlled and manipulated using the thumb and the ventral surface of the index finger. The ring and little finger further support the middle finger and help to transfer the weight of the instrument to the table. The presence of a hand tremor is one of the most problematic issues in microsurgery. Common errors that can cause or aggravate hand tremor include a lack of sleep, a high intake of caffeine, and poor forearm support during microsurgery. Other commonly seen instrument handling mistakes include the use of the middle finger to manipulate the instrument. A similar loss of fine movement control can occur when using wrist and elbow articulations to execute movements. The proper stepwise manner for a right-handed surgeon to load a needle is to start by positioning the needle tip pointing left. Then, hold the needle with the forceps avoiding the needle tip. The needle holder should then be used to place the needle in an upright position. The needle should be grasped at one half to two thirds of the way away from the tip. A flat surface should be used as a support while manipulating the needle. Finally, the forceps tips can be used to gently adjust the needle position within the needle holder. Commonly seen needle control mistakes include trying to control the needle without support and out of focus. This increases both the time needed to load the needle and also the risk of losing or damaging the needle. Holding the needle too far from the tip makes it more difficult to pierce the tissue and increases the risk of bending the needle. Proper needle placement starts by piercing the tissue edge at a 90 degree angle following the curvature of the needle. Using the forceps as support, the needle is grabbed again. An exit point is chosen at the same level of the entry point, with a bite size equal to that of the contralateral edge. The needle should be pulled through using multiple small movements and following the needle's curve. The suture should be pulled with a movement parallel to the table and with the forceps as support. The suture should be pulled until a 2-3 mm length tail remains. 
Inconsistent bite sizes and alignments may result in overlapping of tissue edges and the formation of dog ears. Pulling the needle out with a single straight movement should be avoided at all costs. Doing so may bend the needle, damage the tissue edges, or tear the tissue. Similar consequences can occur if the suture is pulled out in the wrong direction or without support. When tying a microsurgical surgeon's knot, the first double throw is made and tied, crossing instruments. The second single throw knot is then made and tied, uncrossing instruments, and held under tension for 3 seconds. The third single throw knot is made and tied, crossing instruments again. Finally, the suture is cut, leaving 0.5mm ends. Holding the suture too close to the knot site increases the difficulty in making the loops and also increases the risks of pulling the suture right through. Conversely, holding the suture too far from the knot results in the need for wide, inefficient hand motions in order to tie the knot. Leaving the end too short increases the difficulty of grasping it and increases the risks of pulling the suture through. On the other hand, an end that is too long will likely get caught up inside the knot. Finally, tying the first and third knots without crossing instruments will result in a loose knot. The first knot should be tied down such that the tissue edges are well opposed rather than strangulated. Excessive tension on the first knot may result in overlapping edges. If not enough tension is used when tying the second knot, the knot will become loose. Cutting the ends too short will also increase the risks of a loose knot. However, if the ends are cut too long, they may interfere with a subsequent stitch or become stuck in the anastomosis. Finally, the presence of fragments of suture, tissue, or blood within the blades of the instruments may hinder the ability to grasp the suture and impair the ability to tie a knot. The Male Infertility Microsurgery Training Program is an effective tool for teaching male infertility microsurgery skills. A well-equipped training lab provides the ideal environment for the refinement of microsurgical skills and the development of competent microsurgeons.